Hallelujah, glory to God. You are welcome to Prophetic Intercession with Anel. It's always a great honor for me. You already know to me it's a great privilege. Each time I get to bring you prophetic messages from the Lord, God bless you. Especially if this is the first time you're coming across my channel, a special welcome to you. Thank you so much for stopping by. I pray that God is going to use this channel to minister to you prophetically. He will use this channel to tell you his mind per time and help you know him even better for yourself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you so much for yielding to the leadership of the spirit that led you here. I always say this is a divine connection. This is a divine encounter. And my prayer always is that you stick around long enough to hear what God has for you through this platform. Hallelujah. And I'd like to tell you to that here we do pray. We come on live at least once every day to pray and believe God that the prophecies over our lives manifest speedily. And we also hear the mind of God through teachings that God gives us. We want to become a part of those prophetic teachings and prayers and prophetic words daily. In Jesus' name, amen. God told me, he gave me this word in my spirit. He says, this time around, they went too far, so you have to call for backup. You have to call for backup because they have gone very, very far. Certain times, God God was just telling me, certain times, he's going to let certain things happen because of, um, because of disobedience. You know, because of disobedience. When we get comfortable, there is a tendency that we start um, behaving like you know when we get comfortable there is a tendency to 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 slow down on god to slow down on the things that please god to slow down the bible says that to 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 make me understand this word better the bible in the book of judges chapter 6 now i'm just going to read us the little story in judges chapter 6 and we are going to move ahead the Bible says that then the people of Israel began once again to worship other gods. And once again, the Lord let their enemies harass them. This time it was by the people of Midian for seven years. Can you imagine that? Seven years. That's a whole lot. That's a whole lot. Seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites took to the mountains, living in caves and dens. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites could not even stay in their homes. They were so cruel that the Israelites had to abandon their homes to run away for safety. The Bible says they were living in caves and in, and in dens. Can you imagine? And when they planted their seed, marauders, from, from Midian, Amalek, and other neighboring nations came and destroyed their crops and plundered the countryside as far away as Gaza, leaving nothing to eat. I mean, if there is a way when someone takes away from you, they even leave you with crumbs, they leave you with something that you can live on. But this, they left them with nothing to eat. They took everything away. And neighbor nations came and destroyed their crops and plundered the countryside as far as Gaza, leaving them nothing to eat. And taking away all their sheep, oxen, and donkeys, these enemy holders arrived on drives of camel, too numerous to count, and stayed until the land was completely stripped and devastated. So Israel was reduced to subject to abject poverty because the Midianites, because of the Midianites, then at last the people of Israel began to cry out to the Lord for help. The people of Israel were reduced to abject poverty. I mean, they were stricken of everything. Do you imagine that you work so hard because the, the, the story says that they are going to plant but when it's time for harvest, neighboring countries will come and take everything. 
and these media nights they are going to come take away their 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 oxens their donkeys take away everything harvest all of their crops leaving them with nothing and leave them at a point where they are in abject poverty does that sound like the story of someone you know does that sound like your story? Has there been a time in your life when you put in so much effort and yet nothing yields? Has there been a time in your life where you do all you can, all you know how to do, but it is not working? And to a point where you have to call upon God. God, I have come to realize that God always disciplines his children through lack. God always disciplines his children through lack. Whenever you start experiencing a sudden lack in your life, God is trying to get your attention. He wants you to remember something. He's trying to get your attention. There is something you are not doing right. This is what made the Israelites to know that God was far away from them. They call upon God. When they realized things were so difficult, they were living in mountains and in caves, and yet it was still not working out for them. They still could barely survive. I mean, they could barely survive. They just had, they had to believe God for the next meal. It got them to a point where they had to believe in God. They had to call God as a kind of backup. Like, please, Lord, we need you. If you do not help us fight these Midianites, we cannot do it. If you do not help us send away these people from our land, we are going to die. And the Bible says that, When they call upon God, God reminded them of what happened. God started telling them, I brought you out of Egypt. I brought you out of a land of slavery because I wanted you to serve me. I brought you, but you've come here and you have met strange gods and you have forgotten your first love. Sometimes God is going to use her mind to remind you that he is your first love. God will use her mind to, to draw you back closer to him. If you're experiencing a kind of lack, if you're experiencing some kind of um, setbacks, it's a time to think, is God giving you a message? Is God wanting you to run back to him? In any way, have you forgotten your first love? God will let your enemies have an upper hand over you. He's going to let them go as far as they can if that will take you coming back to him. So if you do not want to be a victim of this, it's always good to remain in check. No matter what is happening in your life, do not forget the place of God. Do not forget the place of God. And if you are going through that situation, if you're going through that thing right now, and I mean, you cannot even explain it, you have to run back to God. He is your backup. He is supposed to be your plan A, your plan B, and even your backup. So he has your solution. God has your solution. He's just trying to get your attention. You have strayed far away from him. When you come back, everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. Did you receive this word with gladness? May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. The shalom of the Lord, nothing missing, nothing broken in Jesus' mighty name. Until I come your way again, I remain your prophetic intercessor. Have an, have an amazing day. Shalom.